Here we Let's go keep it down at the Freeman Bowser Jr. show. Yeah, trying to just keep it real, just keeping it real, just keeping it real. Down at the Freeman Bowser Jr. show, talk about issues in the community's affair. That's right. That's right, that's what's gonna affect the whole, that's right. Down at the Freeman Bowser Jr. show, at the Freeman Bowser Jr. show. Just tune on in, just tune on in, just tune on in. You know how you listening? At the Freeman Bowser Jr. show, at the Freeman Bowser Jr. show. Just tune on in, just tune on in, just tune on in. You know, we generally have people that want to say uh, that there are no fathers in the home and that people uh, do these things because they don't have guidance and direction. You know, how did, uh, do, do you remember how we met? Get up close to the mic. Huh? Yeah, we, we, we met by. Uh, Go ahead, you on there. We, we, we met by calling in. Right, you, you, know, you started and calling in. talking about what they couldn't do, you know, and I was telling you about I had just served 19 years in prison, that was 14 years ago. Right, that's right. Been and, out, you know, 14 years now. And it, Bosley said, hey, you know, why don't you just come on and do a show with us? And we did a nice, successful show. Right. The lines was lit up, and, you know, it was a pretty good show. Pretty you know, good so show. Bosley called me back. Okay, and now, and you know, and I know, you know, depending on how much you want to talk about it, uh, the, the facts were you had an incident that you wind up, uh, you shot somebody. Right. Okay. Yeah. And uh, you want to, uh, can you, if you don't mind, I mean, I don't, I'm not trying oh, to. Oh, I don't mind. Time. You, you know, I don't mind. I'll tell you all the time, just, Freeman, that you're welcome to tell my story. Yeah, you know, because okay. uh, Freeman was the first one to actually open the door for me to come on the air. That was my first interview, to come on the air and talk about it. And uh, guns is not getting us nowhere. You know, because the result of it, it landed me in prison for 19 years. You mind saying what you did? You know, I, I, I followed the guy, had an argue with, argument with him, followed him home, and then shot him. Yeah. You know, and the result of that, I was 21 years old. I had just turned 21. <laughs> and when I shot him, I ended up, didn't see the street until I was 40. You know, so... And guns, the result of guns, <laughs> that was 19 years of my life. Well, you know, one of the things that we also talked about is that, uh, you know, while you were locked up, you know, you were mad. And you kind of uh, blamed other people for your situation till how many years went by before you actually started thinking about, I need to try to do something with myself. Man, it, it was at least eight years went by. I'm down in Supermax. And I go down here to see the... Uh, Chairman of the parole board and the parole board. Right. And uh, only thing I remember is a light came on in my head. I was already down there for stabbing the guy. Okay. In the jail. In Supermax. Yes. I was okay. in Supermax. Okay. That Supermax is a is a is a uh, where they separate you from the other. So you unit. you acting crazy even while you locked up. Yeah. Okay. I'm already in there for assault. Here <laughs> okay. I am in there assault. Right. Okay. And. Uh, a light bulb came on in my head while I'm sitting in front of the parole board. I said, what made me think these folks fit to give me parole and I'm already in there for assault? Just stabbed the guy. So I got up on my way out the door and said, hey, I ain't, no. Nah. I said, it don't make me no sense of you wasting your time, you know, up in here. And I'm down here for assault, already in prison for assault. The man told me when I grabbed the door, got ready to go out, he called my name. And he looked at me, and i never forget it, Cranston Mitchell. Cranston Mitchell, we know Cranston Mitchell. Cranston yes. Mitchell looked Very at, good man. He looked at me and told me, said, as long as he on a, he, he's the head of the parole board, I'd never see the streets. He told you that? Yeah, he told me that, and he stood on it. <laughs> he stood on it. It was he 19 on years it. on a 30 year sentence. Yeah. I pulled everything but 11 years. And if it wasn't for Betty Thompson, Betty Thompson, that's a state representative. Yeah. Betty Thompson, right? Betty yeah. Thompson at the time was over the. Uh, Department of Correction. Uh -huh. I shot uh, the policies to Betty Thompson after I learned what it was about. Right. And I told her, I'm already above policies, you know, and uh, Betty Thompson, I told her what I was requesting, and she went and took care of it, and uh, she already knew how long it was going to be before I got out. At the time, I had 17, getting ready to go up for parole again. When I called Betty Thompson, Betty Thompson said, how did it go? I said, oh, it went well. I said, yeah, sounds like they're going to let me out early. She said, no, 
She didn't want to say the no. Right, right. But when I got to, she knew, you know, and it was two years, you know, I had, they, they were hoping that I messed up in two years. Right. He going to cut somebody. He going to fight get in the somebody. Fight, yeah. Right, you know, and they going to snatch my time. Right. And then it's going to keep running. So I chilled, but boy, I tell you, the day before I was getting ready, I, it was, I won't say I got down 30 days, I pacing the floor, and I'm drinking this instant coffee, and this youngster comes up, and he, he, yeah, you stabbed my cousin, you know, you better be up out of here when they get through counting. I said, oh, Lord, that sounds like some serious stuff. I'm 30 days from going home. Right, right. Man, I... Sat down, I thought about it, got up in the bed, I said, I'm gonna, I'm gonna play a role on him. I said, I'm gonna relax it. And when he came back, oh, you ain't gone? I said, hey, man. Now, where are you all at? You in jail? You We're in, in jail. Like a, are you in like a, a cell? Are you in a, a room with four or five other people? Or how you how are you confined? What they call this prison. Are you in a they... pod or something? What, 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 what no, we was in cell. Okay. And it was a new prison like Lincoln they okay. built. Okay, all right. And they had Charleston. Okay. This young come there, pull the seal door and see what he had to say. And How many people were in there with you at this point? At the time, my cellie was gone outside. Oh, so it was you in there by yourself? Yeah. Okay, all right. And I got down out the bed, had my little long john shorts on and, you know, my little tennis shoes on. And I said, man, look, I don't want no trouble. As soon as I said that, I done got in my stood, got him relaxed. Got in my pose and swung on him. And I'm talking about, I said, I got to, this big son gone here. He was trying to spring back up. And I said, boy, if this youngster sprang back up and get me, I'm going to be tore up like sauerkraut. Uh -huh. <laughs> so I, I'm talking about, I went to swinging. I just went to swinging. But when he left up out, I said, man, I hope I don't lose my out date. You know, and nobody, nobody, nobody saw it? Nobody saw it. Okay, all right. You know, so I just say, yeah. You kept I, your out date. Right, I okay. kept my out date. Came home, you know, and first thing I stopped at was McDonald's. My brother come and got me. Right. And we, no, we, yeah, McDonald's. You know, by that time, when I left the street, it was just single, you order your single right. hamburger. Right. I said, yeah, I want two of them. My brother said, wait a minute. <laughs> hey, he just want one of them an extra sandwich. Because mm -hmm. things had changed. A lot. A hey, you were going for a total of 18 years. Total of 19. 19. 19 you locked up for 19 years. years. Was that worth it? Okay, well, for, now, here's the other thing. Yeah. I want to talk about a little bit now. A lot of times people say most folks from broken homes, daddy ain't involved in all this. But you you had a decent family. Oh, I had a decent family. It's, it's, I would never set up and, and, and blame my mother and father for the choices I made. And how many sisters and brothers did you have? I didn't, we had three sisters. Three, it was three sisters mm -hmm. and two brothers. All right. And so everybody else growing up doing what mom and daddy tell them to do, right? Yeah. yeah. But you just was a hardhead. Yeah, went out there in that street and taste the street. Uh -huh. You know, and you know how it is. You think it's going to be there if you leave home. Man, you leave home. You out there saying, where everybody at? Yeah. You know what I'm saying? Yeah, but would your daddy say, son, look, Kenny, look, we, boy, what is the problem? Man, my father set me down and my father tried to talk to me and talk to me. I'm talking about, we have discussions like me and you have right, discussions, right. you know. And my mind was just so ignorant at the time. I want to say ignorant. Right. Well, that's a good phrase to use. You know, because it's a lot of things I didn't know that I thought I know. Right. You know, and when you think you know everything, you don't leave room for an open mind. So your daddy would say, son, come on now. You know, we we got you a house. You got food. You got a place to live, stay. Your sisters and brothers, we all love you. But why don't you come? What, what's the problem? And you would you you'd have you listen to the conversation, right? And then what? Just go straight on back Just out. Just go there. straight on back out there doing what I was doing in the streets, you know. And when you really look at the streets, didn't get me nowhere but to the penitentiary. That's right. And the only somebody who was with me was my family. That's right. Them was the only somebody, not my so-called friends that street. I thought I had. Right. It was it was my mother, my sisters, daddy died doing my bit. Your father died while you he died. Oh, Seen him one time. He come up there and visit me, and that was it. Didn't see him no more. My brother died the first year I went. Yeah. yeah. You know, so I went through a lot of tragedies while in prison. You know, and it was, it, it, you know, like I say, thank God I had put the word in my hand and started reading the word. So you started reading the Bible. I started reading the Bible and, because I say I would never ever want to go back out like I came in. Well, and, what what was it that made you? 
decided to pick up that Bible. You didn't have faith. So all these years going by, Bible been in the library or wherever it was. What made you decide to, at this point, I'm going to read this? Well, hearing them doors slam for one thing. Yeah, I guess. All this hollering going on. And this toilet was so powerful. Mm -hmm. You know what I'm saying? It'll suck a sheet down off in there. That's how powerful it was. Mm -hmm. So it was like, man, this is not what I wanted. Right. You know, but it was too late. I couldn't change my mind. Right. So I had to do something and I turned to the Word. Where was the Bible? You was know? it in your cell or you went to the library? Went yeah. to the library and yeah. got me one and started just reading the Bible. You know, and I said, man, thank God I don't look like what I've been through. <laughs> mm -hmm. Yeah, okay. You know, yeah. so I start reading the word, and you know, when you start planting a seed within, it's going to grow. Okay. So a book, God placed a book in my spirit, and I went on a search, do my research before we even wrote the book, and that was 15 years gone by, and then I wrote the book, and then when I come out, I got it published. It was called No Dot Self Psychologically. Right. Now, you know, Tell me about uh, how you went and got your job where you, you know, you went and told the man that, look, I just got out of jail. I had a rough time. I did some stuff, but Tell if you give truth. me a chance, to go ahead. What you, happened you, now? You, I mean, it don't make no sense going out here lying on these applications, right. you know, because some point in time they're going to find out about you. Right. Just through your social security number. So I just told my man, I ain't going to even tell no lie. Where'd you go? Who, who was it that you talked to? I talked with a, a man called Chris Dockery. He was uh, uh, the interviewer. Where? Man. Where? And uh, remember, Harry, matter of fact, they were down there where Harry and them had their place at, you know, where they was taking us in. And we went, went through these programs in American Steel and came right. down there. And uh, we sat down there. And I mean, man, the man, I just told him, hey, What'd you I say? just got out of prison. You know, I've been out here. I want a job so bad. Huh? Here my card is. I do handyman work. And the man took my card and stapled it to the application. I said, I got that job. You know, and next thing you know, I was called to work. You were called to work. You know, so. Were you a good employee? Did you get fired? Or what? How, how long did you keep the job? I, was a, I kept it 14 years. You kept that job for 14 years? 14 years, mm -hmm. you know. And a lot of things that went on on that job, you know, the, these folks is all about economically controlling and it's the same thing we're going on in the communities mm -hmm. you know by us not having money in our communities but we the biggest consumers you know and if you don't have the funds or the money then that, that's opportunity for them control it's the same way with a man and a woman if the man got all the money or the woman got all the money it's somebody gonna be trying to oh, dominate okay. and so now you got the job and then you 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 didn't stop there. You started uh, doing other things. And now t talk about these cameras and stuff. What made you decide to get into this communications? Well, when they laid off at the plant, you okay. know, and I said, oh, Lord, get ready to go through this, you know. So what do you want me to do? Got on my knees and prayed. And about a month later, I found myself driving to California because I want to know if I'm going to get off into this. I want to know what is they making our movies with. So I drove to California, 30 some, 30 some hour ride, but I enjoyed every bit of it. But when I got there, I found out they was using Canon cameras and Macs. And okay. The professional software is uh, Adobe Premiere and Final Cut Pro, so I started buying into it. Well, I know these these things look extremely expensive. Now, this the, this is not the first purchase that you made, though, right? Oh, no. Okay. Uh, yeah, yeah man, they're very expensive. <laughs> yeah, look at this stuff here. <laughs> and then it this, didn't. Huh? And then the funny thing, he didn't even give me a chance to comb my hair. <laughs> <laughs> me either. <laughs> I mean, I didn't give you a chance to comb my hair, man. I'm like, this brother setting up a camera. <laughs> look, like, look, look like he got my hair combed. <laughs> you know what I mean? I just look like I just woke up. I just got on anything. You know. This, Come on, man. This is movie, <laughs> this is movie producing quality yes. equipment. I, I know. Huh? Look at it. Hey, I'm just gonna break all of it with my looks, man. <laughs> if you gonna if you gonna get off into some, might as well go all the way. Well, but here you went out there because you wanted to do it, but then you started small initially. Yeah, I right. Did. So and and then was well, so obviously you got into it, and then finally you start feeling good about what you're yeah, doing. Yeah, I went back to school and everything, and I tried to take out a, a eighty some thousand dollar loan in Chicago at that AI some school you know, to take the whole program up. And they wanted 80 some thousand dollars. And uh, 
people popping up to my, where you going to back school for something you already know? Mm-hmm. You know, and I'm talking about, it was just coming at me. You know, I couldn't sleep. And uh, I went down there and I counseled alone. And about a month later, I come back, I ran into Roland, I never forget it, Roland down at Black Pearl. Mm-hmm. He stay on the internet. And I'm talking about he find a lot of deals and he shared it with me. He said, man, he said, uh, Merrimack is, Merrimack has got classes going on in video editing, man, for $129 per class. And right. I said, what? And he gave me the address and emailed it to me. And I went home and looked it up, man. I was like, wow. I immediately you jumped went in. Down. <laughs> I'm going to change that word immediately. I'm going to say I immediately yeah, okay. <laughs> went back. Okay. And, and you, I went down there and paid my money. You put in the program. You yeah. The program. I went down there and got certified. Okay. Certified in, video, in what? Video editing. Okay. Got right. certified in video editing. And everybody figured and tried looking at me to my how did he go back to college? Right. You know, shh, God is a blessing. That's right, man. He's a blessing, you know, and I felt so good out there. I carry that piece of paper with me right now today in my bag. You know, let right people up, know. I am certified. <laughs> and you know what kills me? I got my certificate. Right, right that's what I'm saying. Right, go ahead, go ahead. These guys, they want to get off into entertainment. They want to do this and they want to do that. But they don't believe in themselves enough to invest. You know, I actually made it where anybody can afford me. Well, we want you to know, man, uh, you remember um, Pat Washington? Yeah. Yeah, Pat Washington, Darion Phelps. Nikki Roach. I mean, those are the people that were with me when we first met you. So you know, will. Yeah. I, nobody has, none of us have uh, forgotten your story, man. And as a matter of fact, it kind of use it as a point of inspiration for a lot of people, particularly when we're talking to folks, because, you know, you have people that will talk about why folks can't make it and why they yeah, couldn't right. get this going and what happened. But, you know, your story, to me, is just so... Uh, it's so touching. I mean, for 18 years, you fool around in jail. Now, first, even before that, you, you, you kind of, at 21, you mad, you mean, and you bump into somebody in a club, and you follow the person home, and then you shoot them, and you serve 18 years, and even while you're in jail, now you still fight. Right. You know, but then all of a sudden, something within you, you yeah. see, says... I got to try to do something else. So sure will. And you pull your own self yeah. together. And I, I like to tell that story because a lot of times people are, ain't nobody here to help me. Ain't nobody going to do this for me. I can't get this. I can't get that. Ain't no daddy in the home. But you, you had a strong, solid family support base, yes. which a lot of people do. I got people in my family that's foolish, man, and that uh, will do some of the things. They, they haven't hurt anybody. But in terms of things that they do out in the street, they do. Yeah. You know, and we can't say they ain't have no daddy in the, in the family. I mean, we got, uh, I, we come up in the church. Our family been involved in church for 80 years. But we got some knuckleheads that still don't want to straighten themselves out. You got your but own you mind. did that. Huh? You go ahead. Now, what you say? You got your own mind. And with that, what happened? You happens? make your own choices. I mean, excuses, excuses, excuses. The Bible say a man with a slack hand will be poor. I'm not trying to have no slack hand. Okay. You know, uh, when Jesus went out and had a large crowd as he preached the word, his crowd got bigger. Mm-hmm. And this is what a lot of churches don't want to talk about, but I'm going to talk about it. He, when he got hungry, he didn't turn away from that crowd and go get him something to eat. What he did, he fed the whole crowd. That's right. And that's the way it is. Here now in St. Louis, especially with all this violence, we have to turn to the person. And if you're going to eat, let them eat too. And then you ain't got to worry about them coming in your house, taking nothing out of your house or stealing your vehicle. But when you're too busy and you're running from the young folks, that's our generation. That's our future. Who going to help? Who going to show them the way? And that's what didn't happen now, where everybody didn't turn away from the young folk. They scared them, they, and that's the worst thing to have is a spirit of fear. That's the worst thing to have. Black folks ain't no bad folk. You know, we just need somebody that's, if you're going to be strong enough and you're going to educate, you know what I'm saying, at least try to get the person to know who they are. 
what they're capable of doing. And what I mean when I say what they're capable of doing, you got to know yourself. We spend a lot of time around here trying to get to know this person, that person, try to know some female, but we don't spend a lot of time and try to get to know ourselves, to plan what we want for our future. You know, when you stop dreaming and stop planning, this is what you're going to have is all this killing going on. Because ain't nobody trying to show them the right way. I deal with young folk every day when I leave my house. I deal with them every day, whether it's in the community, outside the community. I'm not trying to commit myself to no uh, uh, evangelism team when I'm a worldwide. Yeah. Everywhere I travel, this goes on. That's right. So now, you got these cameras. You make an initial investment. Why do you continue this stuff? It looks like this. How much does stuff cost? Oh, man. Last camera I paid for was five grand. Okay. And so now, what, make you go, what makes you go from just these initial investments to one now? This, this, you're going, this is full-blown now in terms yeah. of what you got here now. Oh, yeah. So wh what were you doing? Well, uh, I, I, I'm trying to make it where, where folks won't set up and say, well, I can't afford that. And nine times out of ten, when you claim what you can't do or can't afford, nine times out of ten, you have no energy to go at and do what you want to do or what you seem to do. We put energy so much into the negative stuff, so, you know. And, and so now you have a, a production company? Is that what you're doing yeah. or what are you doing? Uh, I'm, what I'm doing is uh, running a production company, uh, trying to let people know that, hey, I build websites, logos, and apps. Uh, do video production, commercials, wedding. I got a wedding online with 29, almost 30,000 hits. So we know they love to watch wedding, you know. And uh, it's a, I'm a visual person, you know. I love what I do. I try to make it where they can afford me. But you got some folk that'll beat you, try to beat you now, mm -hmm. you know. But like I say, now I'm throwing out there now that if a person want to show produce, I'm charging them $350. Come on, you got a little 30 minute show. I'm going to get you on the air and everything. <laughs> you know, okay. I'm dealing with charter communication. Okay. So right. I'm about to air a show, you know, called Are You Living on Purpose? 333 uh, 8160. I hope you all got something out of this, you know, because I'm, I, uh, I admire this young man and uh, I met him over the radio and, uh, kept up with him and he I keep up with him sometimes if I if so much time goes by he'll keep up with me but uh Kenny boy you know to have done <clears throat> what you've done and to be willing to talk about a lot of folks don't want to talk about what they did you know but you have uh, allowed me uh to talk about you've allowed Pat to talk you've allowed us to share the story and uh I think it's something that's uh worth hearing 3338160 if you got a question for him you got a comment or something you want to say to them, uh, make, you know, now is the time. But uh, we just want to let you know, man, uh, to, to, to have gone through what you've been through and to accomplish what you've accomplished. You're, you're a hell of a guy, man. You're a stand-up man. And, uh, you know, you always got a word of wisdom uh, for me. You always, you, you self-taught yourself. Well, I, 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 I wouldn't want to take all the credit. I'm going to give God his, oh, absolutely. his due yeah. because... You know, if it wasn't for him putting me in my right state of mind to be able to uh, make the choices and going in, he shows you a glimpse. <laughs> and it's all about if you see the glimpse. Because right. you know the spirit moves fast. Right. So when he shows you that glimpse, you got to be able to catch it. You yeah. know, so I just, I'm just following the spirit. Yeah, man. You're blessed, brother. Appreciate you. We appreciate you. Good morning. You're on the air. What's your question or comment? You're on the air. Hey, what's going on, Freeman? Hey, how we doing, my man? We good, man. Oh, Kenny Boy, the, <laughs> the, 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 the cream that rose to the top. Ain't that something? <laughs> huh? He's there with the big guy in the sky, and he opened up his eyes. Now, yeah. Kenny, this this man here that's calling now is a long time. Liz, he probably been listening to you for oh, seven years. Kenny Boy, too. I know seven Kenny. years, yes. Okay. Seven years. So, so, so I mean, he is an epiphany. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. God made a believer out of him. Yeah. We yeah. need no one to, to stop you. And uh, I'm proud of you, King. Yeah. Thank you. All right. I've been paying attention. Okay. And, and you're right. You got to give God something back. So go out there and start cracking some heads and try to put some of that knowledge in there. 
Well, where all of those books are. That's right. Where all that travel is. Right. It's called the Holy Bible. That's right. I just thought I'd call it get my own testament. That's right. Thank you. Thank you, sir. And, and, and thank you for it. All right. Three 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 eight one sixty. Good morning. You on the air? What's your question or comment? Hold on. You on the air? He that has an ear to hear, let him hear. Good morning, free, and hey. especially a great morning to your guest. Yeah, that's you. Kenny. That's Kenny Boy. Kenny Boy. Yeah. Okay. How you doing? How's it going? I'm triumphantly well, and I'd like to say I'm glad that this gentleman has come on the airway, yeah. and you, being the host, uh, has opened up these doors so that people can hear how a tragic can turn into yeah. triumph. Yeah. And that's all it is. See, we all got to be able to understand that we all attempted, all of us, but there is the Holy Spirit. That's why he said he went to the Bible. Same thing that happened to me 25 years ago. Not the exact same thing in terms of the way I've come into life, but the Bible was the answer for me as well. It's the answer for all of us. Now, whether we want to decide and use that or not, that's, again, our personal choice. But I'm glad that he's on there and doing it. And he said a quote, a quote in the scriptures about the slack hand, and that is true. That is wisdom. It came from King Solomon to the people. And what does it mean? What does it mean? It means that if you do not work with your hands, you do not eat. But if you do use your hands, you will become rich. And a person can read that in the 10th chapter of Proverbs, the 4th verse. So that's Proverbs 10th chapter, 4th verse. Wisdom is universal. It works for anybody. It cannot be destroyed. It cannot be altered. It is immutable. So we have to understand that we are a part of that universal source. All of us are a part of it. And until we coincide with our thinking and our feelings, our emotions, none of this will work for us. There is nothing on this earth that the Creator has not provided for man in great abundance, whether it's knowledge, whether it's money, whether it's fame, whether it's happiness, whether it's family, love, whatever it is, it's unlimited. But we let the powers that be trick us, mm -hmm. trick now, to think that, hey, you don't have this, or you can't get a job, or you can't do that. Kenny Boy is an example. Right. All he did was train his brain, refocus, turn to the Creator, and look what the Creator has done. That's right. That's I right. salute you, brother. I thank you. And that's all I'm going to say. <laughs> it's in Proverbs, yeah. the 10th chapter, 4th verse. All right. God bless so you. Both of you guys. Thank, thank you. you. Thank you. Ladies and gentlemen, it's time for us to go to a break. Keep it alive. We'll be right back. We're playing. What it do, what it do. This your boy Quick with Ambition Clothing, the only lifestyle. Shout out to KB Production. My homeboy, Kenny Boy, he's been getting in for a long time, man. He's been chopping it up and marketing people to no, uh, to, to the highest level. You know, I, uh, I, I did work with bro. He always he showed me a lot when it comes to email blasts and putting your product out there. He'll do that as well. Like, he's a really good platform to Help your business go to another level. Shout out to KB Production and Bitch Going Life. Oh, yeah, that's what I'm talking about. Welcome back, St. Louis. You're listening to the Freeman Bosley Jr. Show on KATZ 1600 AM. I hope you've been enjoying the show so far. Had a couple of good people on. We had Mr. Boone, Daniel Boone's up there on that billboard up there on Washington and Sarah, trying and hoping and praying and waiting for people to show them a little love. Uh, in the meantime, trying to get a seven days of free homicide. Uh, been joined in the studio by a good friend, young man who's been uh, had a life that's been up and down, but decided that he's going to make a change himself. Kenny Boy, who uh, we all are very proud of. Kenny, you've turned yourself into from being in jail for 18 years and creating your own production company, mm -hmm. and uh, now you've got these expensive cameras set up in the studio. Uh, you hire yourself out. You've got cards, anything like that that yes, you give the people? Yes, uh, you got one? Can I, can I have one, bro? I mean, you, I've been dealing with you for 10 years, and I can't even get a business card. You're a hard man to get your let me, let me have a business card there, brother, so I can have it, so we can talk about it a little bit. KB Productions, that's what I'm talking about. KB Productions. If you want to say something to Kenny Boy, please do that. 333-8160, 333-8160. But Kenny, the body, the body count in the city of St. Louis, we over uh, up to almost 100 homicides, if not more, in the city of St. Louis. Okay. Uh, according to recent reports, we'll probably uh, exceed the highest number of homicides in 20 years. 95% mm. of them, though, are black people killing black people. Now, I know you're out here in the street, you come in contact with these young guys. What, what do you tell them, man? What, what is the message? Well, for one thing, I try to get these young brothers to open their eyes and see, 
you know that if you're economically hurting, first you got to learn the four power structures to understand in which the world is constructed on. And economic, economical, that's one of the one of the power structures is economic. You know, so you got to have and understand the economic system. You know, because that's really what's going on now. Is if you ain't got no money, you being controlled. Mm -hmm. You know what I'm saying? Uh, because a person that opened up jobs and 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 and, and, and open up businesses, they create jobs. And it, an opportunity, yes. Right, jobs and opportunity. Right. You know, and and a lot of things we can do ourselves. We some very talented people. You know, only thing we have to do is sit still and listen to what the spirit of the Lord gonna have us doing. Cause everybody's here. We all have purposes. Yeah. Just like we get up and we say we wanna, we wanna go and and, and get some milk, some eggs. That's what right. we go need. to the stove. Well, when the good Lord created us, He already know what He's gonna create Freeman for. He mm -hmm. already know what He's gonna create him for. He said He's been on this boy about over thirty some years and thirty some more years into. You know that's a lot of time. I'll be trying to learn from the man that's successful from where he at. Mm -hmm. Rather than to kill him, why you want to right. kill something that can uh, uh, revive you? Well, but see, here's the deal, though. I mean, you you know what type of mind they got because you had it at one point. In time. Right. Yeah, and that's so, and that's yeah. and that's and that's an interesting that's an yeah, interesting that's thing. Right. Okay, here's the question I want to ask you, and I, and I, and I want to ask this. I want to take away the Bible. Okay. I want to take it take away the religion. Okay. Because a lot of people, when you start talking religion and you start talking the Bible and they, you start talking God, they don't have the belief, they don't have the faith, they don't have any of that. Right. Here's my question. What was it that made you look at yourself and say, I've got to change? Because before you went to that Bible, you made a decision for yourself. Mm -hmm. Is that correct? Yes. You 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 sat and said, you know what? Mm. Whew. I got to You know what I mean? Right. It's, it's something that hit you. Yeah. And said, what was that? Because that's the part that I think uh, a lot of people that's out there and they're, they're doing their things and it, they got to come to that decision. And the people that's listening to help somebody, you got to understand them. Mm -hmm. And you got to understand. And... Who was it and what was it that brought you to that decision to say, I got to change and this is what I'm going to do. And then you went into that Bible, you read it, you did everything you did, you came up out of it, you decided to follow. Right. What was it? Well, for one thing, looking at the fact that the choice that I had made land me in prison. When you're hearing all these doors slam and these keys rounding and these folks telling you that, hey, it's time to get up. You got to stand up when we come around the count. You know, is this the life that I want? You know, so I had to come to terms that got to make better decisions. And 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 there was there was one thing you said before when we was on the air when you called in. You said something about you started looking at you. Yeah, you got to look at because at first you was blaming first. everybody. Yeah. Oh no, you got to you got to look at yourself first. It start with self. You got to look at self because the self will open the door for a lot of things if you're not conscious enough. You know, we do a lot of things and we put ourselves in a lot of uh, uh, predicaments and then we sit back and then we want to point the finger at somebody else. No, 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 St. Louis. <laughs> Listen to me. Look at yourself first. See what you're doing. Is it benefit the community? You know, like, if, even if you start a lawn service, you're going to need some help. Mm -hmm. So then that means that you take the young guys out of the, off the streets and you give them something to do. I got a man right now that didn't have a job. And the man said, well, we need somebody else to work with us. And I went and got this little youngster. I'm always getting the young people because I know they need to know this. You know, because they're not taught. We have to teach our future. We can't turn our back on. You know what I'm yeah, saying? But you use a word you said you was ignorant. Ignorant. Okay. Okay. Right. So yeah. now you, all of a sudden, now 17 years go by, you still ignorant. 
All right, now, at what point, like, let's get back to what BJ say, uh, did you just say, I'm going to walk down to the library and get the Bible, or, man, I, you know, I, you just say to yourself, damn, I've been fooling around like this, I, this just, it ain't right. It ain't getting me nowhere. Okay. Yeah, see, wow, that's, that's what I'm saying. Why keep doing something that ain't getting you nowhere if it's not working? Okay. That's just like running your head into that wall and you're not going through it. <laughs> so why do you keep running your head through that wall? Because one time or another, you're going to run your head to that wall and you're going to pass out and you ain't going to wake back up. So how long were you in the jail before you stabbed somebody? I was in there, I want to say I was in there five years and I stayed in Supermax two years. From just... Fighting and just being aggressive, or what was going on there? Stealing out the kitchen, being aggressive, you know. Uh, Why would fight? you want to take something out the kitchen? You know, you, and you already in jail. Well, we didn't know what they were serving for one thing. Okay. You had folks in there peeing in the beans. Oh man. You had AIDS folks off in there putting stuff off in there, you know. And then when they won they suit, you can you, they couldn't tell who had it. You know, that they putting up in this kitchen. You got folks that was angry. They didn't want to go oh, okay. in that kitchen right, to work. Okay. Right. So, you know, they did whatever they could just to interrupt the food. You understand Look, what I'm right, saying? Right. But, you know, that's why I wanted to go up in the kitchen and work and had to steal food and feed myself. You know, because going to the canteen, all that old stuff, you know, that ain't no good and ain't healthy for you. Mm -hmm. You know, so you got to, you got to kind of be... be Watch the decisions that you that you uh, start dwelling on, okay. because what you dwell on is what's gonna come true. And so now with these homicides, here we are. Okay, we got 106 homicides already. Yeah, that's too much. On pace for 190 for the year. 95 percent of black people killing black people. We got a white man on a billboard on Washington and Sarah trying to at least get seven days of, of no homicide. But then when you ride through these neighborhoods, you see these guys. You know, they, they, they look at me and they act at me. They got white beaters on. They want to be tough. You know, somebody say something wrong, then it's on. So what are you, what are you telling them? Well, my thing it is, 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 for one, you know, why sit back and, 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 and plot to go and do something to somebody or to take somebody's life when you don't? have that authority to do it. So well, man, no, he disrespecting me. Man, I'm tired of these people, man. I've got to, you know, the hell with me. <laughs> right. I, ain't, I ain't going through that no more, right. man. And right. you hear it all the time. Right. I heard a man one time talking about his household one time, and I told him, I said, brother, I'm not going to sit up here and agree with what you just said. I said, you the man of the house. You the head. Go back and work that thing out. You can't run from it. Every time you get a problem, you won't run from it. You can't run from it. You got to know how to solve the problem. Hitting folks, killing folks, robbing folks, that ain't the way to solve your problem. What he say? You know, he looked at me and told me, said, brother, ever since then I told him that. He said, he been coming seeing me. Oh, he been coming okay. talking. So you got it. You know, yeah. You touched him. You know, okay. and, and I can't you know what? With it. That's what I've been saying all along. Thank you for saying that. Yeah. See, I, I tell people that the young people are not killing young people. It's us. Yeah. yeah. It's the ones, the, the adults. Yeah. Because we don't take the time to go out and talk to these young people. No. We yeah. don't mentor these young people. Yeah. We're looking for somebody else to do it. Yeah. You understand what I'm saying? Yeah. We'll sit back all day long and say, oh, yeah, you know, kids crazy. They need some help. Well, the help is you. Right. Yeah. Well, you know what I mean? The, the, the help is them. I mean, if every person in every household right now listening to this show took five kids, took five young people, not just kids, just five people that they know for a fact that is in the street and go and talk to them, plant those seeds and do this and do that, trust me. We won't have this problem we got right now. And you that's all it takes. You don't have to take five. Take one. Yeah, one.